Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. It's me, Whimsy, and today we're going to do uh, two things. I'm going to give the remote viewing for last night, and then we'll go ahead and we'll throw some cards about what's going to be happening politically over the coming week, and I'm going to focus specifically on a couple of other areas. Uh, I want to check on Hope Hicks' testimony that's going to be coming up. People had asked about that, so we'll definitely do that. And we're also going to look at Nancy Pelosi. People had asked me to check to see if she's moving uh, closer towards impeachment. I do see impeachment hearings taking place in the House, and I see the tide turning in the Senate. I've said that before, but we'll go ahead and we'll throw on it again. The first thing I want to talk about when it comes to last night's remote viewing is this idea of the influence of cable news, uh, uh, the cable news and its influence on the American psyche. Whether you're watching Fox News or CNN or MSNBC, it's becoming really increasingly obvious to me and a lot of the other people that do remote viewing and, and meditations that increasingly obvious to me and a lot of other readers that cable news is a form of entertainment that seems to be created in order to encourage people to fight. Whether they're fighting, it's almost like fighting for your team. I don't think that we're going to be able to really have peace in this country so long as people are watching cable news because cable news is invested in creating this kind of war between teams and it's it's very much responsible it, at least in part for some of the uh, extreme tension we see between the two parties everybody is spinning their version of the truth in order to push their uh, this this narrative of like two teams fighting it has a sports feel to it. The only problem with that is that it's not getting Americans to sit down and have real conversations and come up with real solutions. It's just uh, demonizing the opposition, getting people to fight, getting people to hurt each other, um, getting people to be angry. And when you put that out into the world, everybody suffers. Everybody su suffers because even if your enemy is suffering, you're going to be experiencing suffering because unhappy people make the people around them unhappy. We've talked about this. So it begs the question, how do we get our news and how do we get our news in ways that are, are going to just be the news without the fluff and without being manipulated by cable uh, television? And um, you know, I look at everything, but uh, I'm, I'm becoming increasingly aware of when I see bias in the news and uh, the fact that so much news doesn't get covered in the United States at all, that you have to literally go outside the U.S. and certainly outside U.S. cable to get any information about what's going on in the world. So I just wanted to put that out there that cable news has an agenda and the agenda is to get us all to fight and to create this kind of uh sports feel to it like we're all taking on our team and ultimately that's not going to help this country come together and heal and build infrastructure and have real conversations about what we need to do to make the country better for everybody all right so the first throw i've decided to do today is on the coming week i just want to see what's going on in dc in the coming week and then we're going to go into specifics uh based on people's request. So let's take a look. What's going to be going on in DC this week? Base card, P 
people rejecting offers and people feeling defensive. So again, this is what we're seeing a lot is this feeling between the two parties. Nobody's cooperating. Everybody is arguing. Nothing's getting done. Four of Cups moving in as the base card, rejecting multiple offers and feeling Nine of Wands like one is trapped or one is at a one is at war and one feels trapped. Where we are at right now politically, transformation is right over us. This happened last week also when I threw cards, is this idea that things are slowly beginning to change in DC, multiple choices, multiple offers. There's this fear I feel when I go into the energy in D DC, like people are frantically trying to get some offer, some kind of negotiation, some kind of agreement between various different parties because time is running out. That's the best way to describe this. Here we have it again, the Hierophant always moving into position. And as I had said in previous uh, videos, for me, when I look at the state of the union, the Hierophant represents the Constitution. And the challenge or what marinates in the issue of the Constitution, Six of Pentacles, kindness, mercy, uh, helping those who cannot help themselves, philanthropy, to be a benefactor, what we're coming out of, celebration, a celebration. So there's a celebration that has already happened regarding a new contract. This is something that I wanted to talk about really uh, quickly that I've been picking up on. Do you remember what I said in previous remotes that I felt like Donald Trump was never the focus of the investigation by the intelligence agencies? He just wasn't. I mean, <laughs> He was never the focus of the investigation. The, inv the focus of the investigation was uh, Russia and other countries jamming our system, uh, using cyber warfare, uh, developing sophisticated ways of monitoring and controlling attacks, cyber warfare attacks. That's the focus of the investigation. It's almost as if the intelligence agency really doesn't care whether or not Donald Trump got compromised. It's, it's neither here nor there. It happens all the time. It might have been uh, something that they were monitoring for years. The real meat of the investigation, again, is controlling for cyber warfare and working with allies to try and find out who's responsible for the Russian meddling. So that's the real investigation. That is also probably why we have all these cards coming in in the coming weeks, like Two of Cups, new negotiations, new relationships. It's almost like everybody starts to get on the same page and what and the common goal, I'll show you again, what crowns the house for the week is the Hierophant, again, the Constitution and transformation. Here we have again, just like before, offers and coupling or partnerships where we are at right now. Again, just as last week, same cards. What are the statistical odds? We have 70, what is it, 77 cards? 10 possible houses that they can land in. It's landing in the same house, seventh house, of a, a 10 piece card chart, a Celtic cross spread, exile, poverty, trying to get back to the church, Right, but I always like to call it walking away from the broken man. Getting away from whatever it is that keeps you in exile. Again, what is around us offers, partnerships, a happy home, cups, cups, cups. Ten of cups keeps coming, or the cups keep coming in hopes and fears, the world stage, and then the final outcome, peace, harmony, uh, improved relationships, again, commitments. If we're going to war with Iran, I don't see it. It's almost like NATO comes in and NATO says, this is not gonna happen. We're not gonna allow uh, Russia to do this. We're not gonna allow our country to be attacked in this way. It's like the intelligence agencies are now on the same page. The, the GOP is, everybody is coming together to be on the same page. It's all about cybersecurity working across the aisle. Final outcome again, King of Cups, which is the great negotiator, the offerer of peace, and Four of Wands. Uh, 
regarding the issue of the broken man or regarding the issue of what places certain individuals in exile, feelings of entrapment. But again, look what's coming up in the coming weeks. Ace of Cups, hopes and fears, the ability to come together to negotiate, ensemble, and then final outcome. Somebody is offering uh, peace. So it keeps coming up over and over and over again, the same theme, the same archetypes when I go into the energy that we need to move away from the fighting, move away from the cable television and sit down and have some real conversations um, and not give uh, the media so much power, not give these cable t news stations so much power and begin to do our own research and talk to people. Let's start talking to our fellow Americans. And um, yeah, so that that is the feel. Peace, harmony, communication, uh, stop demonizing one another. It's interesting. I wanted to throw on Hope Hicks, and the reason I wanted to throw on Hope Hicks is because if you've been watching this channel for a while, about four or maybe less, about three months ago when I was doing remote viewings, trying to put myself forward, it's one of the things you can do is try and follow the energy and see what the most likely outcome is. Putting myself forward, I kept seeing the significance of the Hope Hicks testimony and the meeting on the plane. So I would like to go in and just see what's going to happen during Hope Hicks testimony. Because I, I, I think something very significant is going to happen. Let's take a look. I like Hope Hicks energy, you know, she, I can see why people like her because she's somebody who really just fo focused and did her job and tried to do it to the best of her ability. And she tried to be loyal. She tried to be helpful. Unfortunately, she got in with a group of people where that could potentially become very dangerous. We can see here the high priestess is moving in and the high priestess is the symbol of, you can see Torah, Ta or to bear the light, to open the eyes, to see clearly. So there is some aspect of her testimony, how I would interpret it looking at these cards, the truth or some type of information is going to come out that may not have been apparent before. And we can see the wish card moving in three of wands. So the only way that I could interpret this is that Hope Hicks' testimony will be significant in terms of moving us closer towards impeachment hearings. Where she's at right now, fool takes a leap of faith. The only way I would interpret that is that she's going to uh, tell us what we need to know. She's going to be honest during the uh, testimonies. She's uh, This is Congress. Um, and I think that I don't see uh, perjury. I don't see anything like that. I think she's going to be very forthcoming, very, very honest. Um, I think, as I had said, when I had previously looked at her cards, there's this feeling of heartbreak or betrayal or a feeling of trauma regarding her former time at the White House. A judgment has already happened. This leads me to suspect that there's some secret plea deal she already made or she negotiated something undercover that that people are not totally aware of. There's some deal here that people may not be aware of that has already happened. And the near future is the star. So the only way that I can interpret it is that she was negotiating with a special counsel privately before this happened. And now she's free to talk. Some aspect of this investigation has now allowed her to talk about whatever deal or whatever arrangement she may have had. Okay, so Wands is moving in and the people around her become defensive. She appears to be a 
a very good witness. Hopes and fears, moving on. And then the final outcome is to negotiate. Something is going to happen as a result of Hope Hicks' testimony that is going to move us closer towards reconciliation between Republicans and Democrats. And she'll be allowed to move on, which is what she really wants to do, which is just move on. Interesting. I, uh, I always feel the same thing when I go into Hope Hicks' energy that she just wants to put the past behind her. She wants to move on. I want to do a quick one on Sarah Sanders. Every time I have a vision of Sarah Sanders, she's coming to stay with her parents and she gives them a look and she says, don't ask. So I get the impression that she's a very practical person and She doesn't want to talk about this, but I, I, I just want to check to see what she's up to. What is going on with Sarah Sanders? And will she run for governor of Arkansas? So there is a complaint from Sarah Sanders when I go into the energy. She says she was not allowed to do her job, that the press did not allow her to do her job. There's a feeling of frustration that she was blocked, she was misrepresented, she was harassed. Um, there's also a feeling like the administration may be disappointed in her, but not totally upset with her. It's more like it got to a point where she could not do her job because of the tensions between her and the press. And so for that reason, it was agreed that she should move on. So it was not ho completely hostile. It was just that it had become impossible. Every time she tried to have a press conference, there would be these intense conflicts between her and the press and she felt like she couldn't do her job. And when it became increasingly obvious that she was not going to be able to continue to, to do uh, press conferences because of how disruptive they were, that, w that was part of the decision. So she left on good terms, but there was a feeling like they saw very clearly that she could not continue to do this. She's been already been given offers. Um, it's very possible that she could run for governor. Just because the archetype moving in is the perfect judge, uh, Yehudit, the perfect judge, a queen of wands, magician, she's coming into her power, two of pentacles. Yes, I think that she has aspirations like her father to go into politics. She has a job offer. Yeah. She's also been asked to write a book. Mastery. And then the final outcome, moving on. She will survive this. She'll probably write. And uh, I don't see her ending her relationship with the Trump administration with, it, with any kind of negatives. You know, she did the job the best she could, and when it was obvious she couldn't continue to do the job, she moved on. I'm going to do one quick throw on Nancy Pelosi to see if she's moving closer towards... Um, I just want to check to see if Nancy Pelosi is moving closer towards impeachment. I, just because there's so many cups cards moving in, and I feel like the Republicans want to make a deal with the Dems, that's like right over us. I just have to take a look. Let's see what Nancy Pelosi's up to. What is Nancy Pelosi up to?
What you up to, Nancy? Oh, gosh. She feels like the first thing I feel when I go into Nancy Pelosi's energy is that she literally is being put up against the wall. You can see the energy moving in, frugality holding back. By the way, that includes being frugal with the budget. She's not wanting to negotiate with anyone, and she's she's taking what power she has, which is the power of the purse. You can see the Four of Pentacles moving in, which is frugality, and to hold the coin. She's holding back the coin or refusing to negotiate with Republicans on a budget because of, you can see moving in, again, the Knight of Nine of Wands, which is to feel tired, exhausted, like one has been fighting a battle for a very long time. But I don't like that retracted energy with the Four of Pentacles being in the base where she's at right now she feels like she's going to get her wish regarding some type of an agreement two of cups there's something going on in dc where negotiations are going on behind the scenes cooperation between the two parties that's going to to, to get nancy pelosi off the hook in some way that's the best way i can describe this energy there she is A judgment's coming. It says something about the fact that this will be taken out of Nancy Pelosi's hands. The situation will get smoother. The Republicans that are moderate are going to help her. Um, I'm sorry, folks, but it, it does look like a backdoor deal. Why is she feeling entrapped? It's almost like a feeling like she has to agree to something. But in the end, it's a good deal. In plainer words, the way that I would interpret these cards is that some kind of a deal that she doesn't totally want to make, she's going to make with the Republicans, and it's a sweet deal. That's the be that is uh, as much as I know looking at the remotes, uh, looking at the cards. So when I look at the energy, expect some kind of deal secretly going on between Pelosi and moderate Republicans that she doesn't totally want to make, but in the end, it's a, it's a sweet deal. And it just feels like this, it just feels to me, I just keep seeing the same thing over and over and over again, the Republicans pulling away from this president. All right, I wanna thank you for watching this video of Tarot with Whimsy. If you're still trying to get in for uh, readings this week, uh, yes, I'm back at work tomorrow and I have openings uh, for this week. I work Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, they're phone readings, so you make the appointment through tarotwithwhimsy.com and then I call you at the appointed time. I'm in California, so it's Pacific Coast Standard Time, people had asked about. All right, thanks for watching, everyone, and we'll see you next time.